All right, welcome to the... Not really my second episode, but the second episode of this new format. I'm using my iPod. Wait, this isn't an iPod, this is an iPad. It's an iPad Air 2 with a big frickin' hard drive. It's not really a hard drive either. All right, so speaking of hard drives, now, this is only my financially limited experience, but I can use a bus-powered laptop hard drive on the Xbox 360. I'm, I'm, I don't know if you understand what that means. Um, I have a Wii U, and I have to use an externally powered um, it's actually a Seagate SATA to USB adapter and but it has a Western digital drive um, this drive actually has been serving me well for a decade knock on wood though and um, but it has to be externally powered my personal experience, this may be only me, but my personal um, experience with using uh, jump drives or USB drives as they're called, or thumb drives, I don't know. Let's just use USB drive. And bus powered laptop or even desktop, but usually laptop hard drives. The Wii U, my Wii U rejects these. It, it, it won't copy to it sometimes, uh, it says it's too slow, um, it ignores it, it shuts down power, whatever. So, I, I don't know about the Xbox One. I don't know about the Sony um, home systems. What I do know is this, that, that is my uh, personal experience with the Wii U and bus-powered hard drives and uh, USB drives. I've never had a problem with any model of Xbox 360 with USB drives, and especially when with authorized, like, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, or whatever, to start allowing um, people to use uh, drives that are one gigabyte or bigger to store their Xbox games. I don't know how many games could fit on a one gigabyte but it didn't matter oh, I could use a CF card, I could use SD cards, anything as long as it had a USB interface and um, sometime in I think late 2014 or early 2015 Microsoft allowed um, Microsoft allowed USB uh, bigger USB drive but it's picky. It's real picky because um, I tried using a, a Seagate desktop and uh, a drive, and it didn't like it. This one had its own external power and everything. The Wii U liked this drive, but um, I didn't need it on the Wii U, so I went ahead and I, I stuck it in a computer because I needed a hard drive for a computer. But before that, yeah, the Xbox just didn't like this drive. I was using a, um, it's called a... Um, a digital metal box or a metal box solid or something like that. It, it was these um, enclosures that have uh, two Firewire ports and a USB 2.0 port that were manufactured between 2004 and 2007 uh, at CompUSA, by CompUSA. They're actually pretty decent enclosures, but I guess the Xbox 360 just doesn't like them. So I have um, I have a Hitachi drive that has its um, it has a Seagate has a Seagate kit. I don't have the enclosures for these um, basically because I have to open them and get into the drive. A lot of a lot of times, regardless of brand, but less so with Seagate than anyone else, I would have to get in and um, do. I usually find out by switching adapters, the drives get better performance. And um, recently, though, I had a, an experience that lost me, um, I would say, nearly uh, 
Oh, I don't know what I would say. Maybe, maybe almost two terabytes of games. When um, I had an ex I had two external uh, laptop drives. One's SSD, and the other is um, the other was a, a regular drive. And I bought the same enclosure because I was so happy with the way the enclosure was working. Uh, these are made by um, Best Buy, either it says Insignia or... Um, it's not Belkin. Uh, Dy Dy Dynan? Dysan? Uh, either way, it's um, these, either it says it, 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 if it reads Insignia or Dysan, it's Best Buy's house brand. But I actually was so impressed with this one drive I had, which had the majority of my software on it, that uh, I went ahead and I plugged in another one, which had a 160 gigabyte drive. Now, this drive is now permanently screwed, because upon plugging it in, whatever reasoning Windows 10 had, it did some really weird conflicts. Now, this isn't going to happen in my... My theory is not going to happen on the Xbox 360. I'm going to use this kit on now. And I have a different drive. I have a, um, I have a Fujitsu. I have a Fujitsu drive right here. It's SATA. Uh, a lot of people wonder how come I don't, I don't say uh, SATA as a word because it sounds stupid. It's SATA. Now, um, I'm looking at, I, this is about, uh, this one, um, this was the, okay, this drives a decade old, but it's been reliable to me ever since I got it. I still install it for me in uh, somebody's uh, MacBook that I use for work, so... I'm, I'm pleased with it, and it should work just fine. I'm, I'm just in the process right now of moving things uh, from mem uh, memory <laughs> That's what the Xbox calls it. From memory units, getting <laughs> talking like the Xbox, from USB drives to um, these hard drives. Got a bit of a little hiccup there. You don't, I know you don't see it because I paused it. Um, figure out what I was doing, but I got to go. Um, this brings me to uh, the Wii U. I'm not going to talk about Nintendo's next system or anything like that. I believe that, um, you know, I don't know how much power Mr. Reggie has at Nintendo. And um, this new president of Nintendo, he's a determined individual. He uh, addresses the problem of old-style thinking. But... Um, whether or not the Wii U is a failure is really dependent. It is the only profitable game system out there. Everyone else is operating at a loss. Um, don't believe the uh, religious rumors where people say, you know, the Xbox division or Microsoft, Microsoft's gaming division has pulled a profit. Um, they haven't pulled a profit sometime since the early 1990s. And um, the company, the, the whole company of Microsoft does make a profit. So um, it makes plenty of revenue, plenty of profit, maybe plenty of uh, philanthropy, charity, so forth and so on. I'm not praising or anything, I'm just reporting the truth. Um, Making a profit in one quarter is not making a profit. That's exactly what happened. Sony has been at a loss since some time uh, after their acquisition of Columbia Pictures. They have not made any money on Columbia Pictures or the Ventures. Um, they haven't made any money with PlayStation. Why do they keep doing it? Um, well, first you have to understand Sony, they're not a Japanese company, they, they are an acronym, and uh, the reason why they're based with many divisions and laboratories and manufacturing centers in Japan is because of investment from a very prominent American family. I don't want to bring any of this up because this family can simply destroy me. 
Uh, it's up to you to do the research. But Sony is an acronym, and if you can figure out what that acronym is, and what major uh, energy company, and I don't mean as in a power company, I mean a company that produces resources for energy, actually controls Sony, you, you'll understand why they have to dominate um, every little thing on the planet. I mean, it, it's it's kind of confusing because Sony owns, for some reason, they own the rights to Seinfeld, for instance. But Seinfeld is was produced by Castle Rock Entertainment, who's owned by uh, Time Warner. And um, you know, how does that work? It, it is, I understand Castle Rock at one time had distribution for New Line Cinema, who had distribution through Sony, but both New Line Cinema and Castle Rock Entertainment. And Castle Rock Entertainment, as you know, was named after something related to the author Stephen King. So both Castle Rock Entertainment and um, um, New Line Cinema is owned by Time Warner outright. But yet Sony holds the rights and collects the money uh, on the Seinfeld show. Uh, Barney Miller is another one. They, they own and collect it and everything. But they don't they don't own Barney Miller in the way that it's thought of. It, Barney Miller should be owned by the Walt Disney Company when you really think about it because it was uh, the American Broadcasting Company that handled its production. However, its syndication distribution, I believe that company was picked up uh, somehow and ended up at Sony. And this goes for a whole, a whole bunch of um, non-Sony related content. Um, Sony has the American, or even, I think, or Western uh, distribution rights for things like Godzilla. Sony has been, in my opinion, the absolute worst company in gaming. And um, whether people like that or not, I, do, I don't care. I, I have a PSP, and I have a PSP because I can rebuy um, a lot of older PlayStation games and then play them on the go. Uh, maybe, perhaps, I should have got a fat PS3, but I'm sorry, that looked like an absolute ripoff. Uh, I'm sort of considering it now for other reasons, mainly because my eyes aren't what they used to be, and the PSP is not what it used to be. It is. We've owned the machine for over a decade. Um, it has a very large memory card inside of it and that I'm trying to fill up for that whole decade. But overall, um, after I get what I want, and a lot of games are available, so um, I am, I, you know, I will acknowledge that's a good thing from Sony. And Sony's been nothing but helpful, but I just don't like them. I don't like the type of gamers they attract. Um, I'm going to say, they attract the dude bro douchebag. And uh, those aren't the people I, I even want in gaming. Um, there's other types of douchebags in video gaming, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, you know, I'm not here to insult the base. You could probably be part of that base and not realize it. I know I'm not. Um, I never have been. Now, about the uh, Wii U, and this is what... Um, I'm finally out of debt. I'm not counting credit cards. Here. Um, our car is paid off. We have a, an agreement with our landlord. Rent is very well taken care of and controlled. Um, this is I'm sharing some personal aspects, and the debt that we had incurred is gone, incurred, and now it's gone. Done. That debt doesn't exist. Um, the new debt is not really debt. It's a savings plan. And I, I think that this is a regret and this is advice. If you are under 30, if, especially if you are under 20, 
bite the bullet, delay your gratification, and do your best, absolute best, that once you start making minimum wage full time, that's 40 hours a week. And make sure you get a company of those paid lunches for them. That's why it says 9 to 5. We're supposed to get paid lunches. Whatever he says or not, he's a, uh, a, a slave driver. And the idea behind the 9 to 5, which basically means eight, working 8 hours a day, five days a week, you get 40 hours at minimum wage. I don't mean the fake minimum wage of $15 an hour. I'm talking the legally normal minimum wage, which should be about, let's just say, eight twenty-five an hour. You'll make plenty of money to $500 away a month if you work, if you work for 35 years at $500 a month. You will have, after taxes, $241,000. If your spouse does the same thing, and, you know, I don't, I don't, when I say spouse, I don't, I don't mean man, woman, I mean man, woman, man, man, woman, woman. Puts $500 a month away as well. That means, as a couple, $1,000 is saved a month. $12,000 a year. That will equal over half a million dollars to retire on. This is a better plan than any of those dishonest IRAs, CDs, mutual funds, or anything. What I'm telling you, do not play the stock market. Avoid the stock market. This goes into a savings account that has interest. Choose your bank wisely. Some place like credit union, give a savings and and a um, a savings and a checking. Use the savings. Use the savings. Put the money away for a long term. Don't worry about political conspiracies or anything. You know, I don't know if you're an atheist or not. I am not, so I'll say God will work everything out in that regard. But as a man, the species, not the sex, go ahead and take five hundred dollars a month once you are working 40 hours a week at the minimum wage you starve now so you don't starve later ant and the grasshopper got too many grasshoppers not enough ants here and i'm not talking bugs life or the movie ants this is the actual ant and the grasshopper i'm talking about here work like the ants if you, if you want some numbers here, let me give you some numbers. Let's say, don't go to college, go to a full-time job, starting at, at um, 18. Um, we'll just start at 18. This is for simplicity's sake. So a person works until they're 75. Okay? So that's 57 years. Let's say he also got married the day he turned 18 and graduated from high school. I'm trying to simplify this, this analysis. What does this have to do with the Wii U? You said? I'll get to the Wii U. This is more important. Saving money. Saving money is the greatest thing you can do. Don't listen to those jerks out there who tell you to spend money. You, you need to save at least $500 a month. No matter how hard that is. No matter how many kids you have or anything. Get on an insurance plan. Get on Medicare, Medicaid. Use socialism to your advantage that as it exists in the United States. If you have to get on food stamps, get on food stamps. Whatever. Take advantage of all these things that are for you, the citizenry. If you're an, Ill an illegal alien, I have no sympathy for you. Get the hell out of the country. I don't care if that wins me fans or not. That's how I feel. I pay my tax dollars so... So my fellow citizens who choose not to work and want to live off of welfare, they can they can do that with my tax dollars. They're free to do that. I allow that. I don't. I'm not condoning it. I'm not promoting it. What I am saying is they're allowed to do it. So, 57 years. That's someone working from 18, 18 to 75 years of age, okay? At 75 years of age, let's say that they did do that. 
They got a full time job and everything, and they're, they're, they're saving five five hundred dollars a month. All right, so 57 times 12 is 684 months times 500. That equals $342,000 after taxes. They can put more in than they want. I plan on to when I make more money. And if they have a working spouse who's also uh, same birthday, graduated the same day, and they all got married on the same day, right? You got $684,000. Now, they, they limit themselves to $1,000 a month. All right? So, we know that's 684 months. How many years is that? That's exactly double. 57 years. So, how old would they have to be? How old would they have to be if they retired at 75? to spend all this money if they go at a limited, disciplined, patient rate of $1,000 a month. That's not including them getting their SS back and having benefits and stuff like that. Well, they can live up to 132 years old easy on this limited income. That does not mean they go willy-nilly and buy steak dinners and major Christmas gifts and Buicks for everybody. Or they go on vacation and all that crap. No, this means that they have a daily routine, seven days a week, that they follow. What, what is that routine? What would that routine be? Well, they eat mostly at home. Okay, they have $1,000 a month. That's $500 every two weeks. You know, they have to figure out how are they going to pay their power. Well, that's not really a problem, but they limit their power. Okay, they have energy saving light bulbs, stuff like that. They limit their watering time and everything. Maybe the biggest draw for them is water. They may not necessarily have Netflix or Hulu because such things may not interest them anymore when they get to this age in the future or at that age now. So that's at $1,000 a month. Plus, like I said, they're getting income. They're getting pension. They may have a pension. I don't mean a 401k or anything like that. I'm talking an honest to God pension. When I retire, I get a pension. Maybe I'm too familiar with the way union pensions work. Um, as long as they don't invest this, as long as they don't fall for any scams that you see on American Greed or anything like this. They pay their taxes and everything, they make payments on whatever they have and everything, but these, this couple or this individual struggles to put $500 a month. In 35 years, they get $214,000, but in 57 years, they get $342,000. Now, that's not as much. It's 342 months. But if they're married and doing $1,000 a month in the savings, then they get 600 whatever, and it keeps them alive for 57 more years, to the age of 132. But then by getting also the Social Security and maybe even food stamps, and other uh, benefits, and, um, I'm not going to call them entitlements, other benefits here, um, perhaps then the money even stretches longer where they're not using $1,000. $1,000 is the maximum per month. Out of that $1,000 every month that has to come, things like uh, entertainment, like going to the movie theater maybe, maybe twice a month, uh, or once a month, maybe going, um, you know, I don't know, their recreation activity should be things like walking the mall, walking the park or whatever. Say they have um, a dog, a dog, I'm not, I'm, you know, um, this is also fuel for their car, and maybe um, at the same time by having this, this creates independence. The person who's independent, the older they get, maybe, um, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I know some individuals like, both my grandfathers, that with the exception of the very end, the very, very last days, did not need to be cared for. Yet I also have relatives with my great grandmother who had to be cared for um, for their last years, just completely falling apart. Uh, the best way to do this for care is to believe it or not have good children who married also good individuals who are also doing the same thing that way 
If I die at the age of 95 or 100 or even 120 years old, um, they get my money. Whatever left of it. So, you know, let's say I die at 95, there's some hundreds of thousands in it. But instead of going willy nilly and spending them, it, it, it should be drilled into their head to take that and put it into their savings. What I'm talking about is ideal, but at the same time what I'm talking about is common sense and practicality. And I'm sharing this with you because there's, there's this country is headed to hell in a handbasket and you have to look out for yourself. Uh, you, know, you may not agree, like I said, you may not agree with what I have said about illegal aliens or you may agree with what I have said about illegal aliens. Nevertheless, they, are, they don't belong here. They have broken laws to come here, and they're taking away what belongs to us. The taxpayer, the citizen who has to live. I mean, if I have to live on this earth, I'm going to have to be a little selfish. Now, dis disclaimer, I am not white. So, you know, I do come from immigrants. Uh, but don't, don't misunderstand me again. I just want my fair share. What does this have to do with the Wii U? Okay, here's the deal with the Wii U. Again, I said, like, this Nintendo guy, he wants he wants youthful thinking and stuff. Well, I'm not as old as him, I'm not as old as the company, I'm half the age of Miyamoto. So, I'm not maybe as young as he would like. I'm not even applying for a job at Nintendo. I would take one, uh, but they probably wouldn't hire me because uh, of my... Uh, very politically incorrect, very bluntly honest stance on, on a lot of issues. But I see business as business. The business of the United States is business. So here's some business. Well, this is Japanese country. Um, having grown up with both American and Eastern influences, let's look at let's look at a few things wrong with the Wii U. You know, there's five or ten things I don't know. First thing out the gate that's wrong was Nintendo using the G4 processor. If they had used the G5, I think companies would have been willing to port it over. Also, the other thing about using the G5, and I think all the cost of the Wii U is driven up by its control. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, with the Wii U, it should have used like an 8-core G5 processor. These exist. The last G5 Max, I believe, were quad core, using two G5 processors, and they're called the quad core G5. So, if the Xbox has one as, as a tri core, uh, why not have have a hex core Wii U running G5s? I believe this would have had it maintain. Uh, not compatibility, um, a competitive uh, advantage, not an edge, not edge, but would have had a competitive advantage. Um, using Blu-ray, um, it, it's a, it's written differently, but it, the, the Wii U uses Blu-ray. It's manufactured and written differently. I think these are manufactured either Yamaha or Panasonic or Maxell or something like that. Um, I'm going to go with Panasonic, and um, with the Wii U um, being this, it, it can go all the way up to, I would say, um, probably 128 gigabytes of disk. That, that's, a, that's a quadruple core, I mean quadruple, quadruple layer uh, Blu-ray disk. Um, as far as the gamepad goes, yeah, the controller should have been thrown out. Compatibility with former Wii controllers? Absolutely. Um, but that tablet? No. Because um, while I do point this out, and I have pointed this out, for programmers who are having trouble with the Wii U tablet, you know, how come you didn't have that same trouble with, with the DS and 3DS? So Nintendo always has this thing about two screens, but I think in this essence in the long run. Um, so how would Mario Maker have worked? Well, 
This one's a, a bit tricky. Um, it could have linked up with the DS. So if someone had a DS, it said it would be the first game that's DS required. That's my solution. It could have linked up with the DS. I am, um, well, not DS, uh, excuse me, 3DS or new Nintendo 3DS. Dumb, dumb, dumb name. Um, the name Wii U. I think that Nintendo um, Wii 2 would, wouldn't have been as good either. Um, what I think they should have gone is just called it an Ultra Nintendo. Use a, that's what the U actually stands for. It stands for Wii Ultra. Um, if anyone can cite that, that would be appreciated. That is what I've heard. That's an urban legend. But I think the U stands for Wii Ultra. Uh, it should have been released in 2011 with, you know, a, a hex core G5 processor. Eh, the video processor is fine. Um, I don't know what the RAM is inside of it. So I'm going to give my own specification. It should have had 2 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, maybe maybe even uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM. Not shared by the video. The video itself should have a dedicated um, 1 gigabyte of RAM. So I'm going to say uh, uh, 4 gigabytes of system RAM, 1 gigabyte of regular RAM. Pro controllers that are wireless, no tablet, able to link up through a 3DS or a new 3DS to play games like Super Mario Maker. Um, I would have handled Amiibo support. Uh, I believe that this uh, this could have been simple enough. Um, that base station, just sync it up, like you know, the one that's for 3DS. Well, this one would be for. We use sell it for twenty bucks and it syncs up and there's an amiibo support. Uh, other things here. Um, Wii mode shouldn't exist. Wii mode should be integrated right into it. And then this goes also for the eShop and the Wii Shopping Channel. Leave the Wii Shopping Channel for the Wii, but then in the eShop it should have all the Wii Wear and all the Wii virtual console games also there. And then they just run in Wii mode similar to the way Mario Galaxy 2 runs, Mario Galaxy, all these other Wii re-releases on the uh, Wii eShop. Um, it's a little awkward to have, you know, DS and uh, Game Boy Advance games because they look terrible. They look, they look actually awful on the TV. They are still fun games, but that, that's really not where they belong. Um, I don't know what Nintendo's deal is. I don't know if they have computer scientists or engineers who just can't crack an emulated or mode code. Or whatever the frickin' deal is. Um, but these don't belong on the Wii U. If they want to go ahead and sell the Game Boy Advance titles, I think that's where it should go at the very most. And, um... And uh, I believe that also that they should unify every game system that's not Sony or Microsoft and have every game available. So they should have programmed blanket emulators. Um, as far as internal storage goes, 32 gigabytes is, is quite a lot. It's quite a lot. And um, I think that was okay and allowing hard drives to be used. Um, it should have been bus power. I already explained all that. So if you can allow a person to use a USB drive or whatever. And, but I think the support should stop also at two terabytes for the hard drive. I totally agree with that. Um, the Wii U should be available in a range of colors, like the iMac. The Wii U should have a GameCube mode. And it just remaps everything to the Pro Controller. Uh, I don't see what the problem here is with that. But that apparently is something it cannot do. I understand the mechanism would have to be changed inside the disk drive a little bit. That should have a GameCube mode. If, even if it was using a G5, two G5s and a hex core. 
Um, well, it's not a hex core. It's three. There are two tri cores. So it's a, I'm just going to call it the hex core. The hex core idea. G5 can completely natively run uh, processing all the way down to to the 601 series of CPUs, which were used in the uh, early power PCs from Apple, IBM, and a few other companies. Now, um, I think the operating system would have been fine if it stuck to the Wii channel, but allowed unlimited channel. No, no, or you're gonna have a limitation, have a ridiculous limitation of 10,000. The average person will never get to that limitation, so that way there can be 10,000 channels on screen. I have to always make folders and I'm always taking things out, putting things back in, or whatever like that. Um, now, by having this, we're talking thousands of old games. Every Wii game. And what Nintendo ought to do is take the top 100 selling Wii games, third party and first party, and make them available as selects. While the rest are all, all available for download if someone wants it. So, some schlub wants, uh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, isn't there a Dead Space game on Wii? So, you know, then it's available. At the same time, someone wants Immortal for the Genesis, they can get it. Let's say they want it for the NES, they can get it. But let's say they want, uh, Demons to Diamonds for the Atari 2600, they can get that. They can get it for the XCGS, the Commodore 64. And don't have regions, have, have everything available everywhere. So if a person sees a Japanese game, let them download it. They want a European game. The emulator will compensate, and vice versa. So all regions are unlocked and everything. Um, no regions, no, no, no regions. No, no. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with their new game system. Uh, you know, I, I don't have an opinion on the new 3DS. I don't. I'm going to buy one. Um, I have a lot of reasons on why I want to buy one. Um, I do want to play SNES games on the go. So, and I don't, I don't do emulation. What I mean by that is I do legal emulation, whatever the company can do. Um, speaking of the disk drive, while well, I do talk about this, I think at the same time using blanket emulators, the Wii U should have also been able to play a single CD, PC Engine, 3DO. CDI, so forth and so on, Dreamcast, Saturn, uh, Amiga 32, but whatever, that part, that part kind of makes no sense, to tell you the truth, it's, it's nice for the consumer, but Nintendo would see no profit, nor, nor would the companies providing it, what profit would they get, you know? Oh, I, I'm using my original copy of Nights in the Dream from 1996 or 1997. You know, now I'm playing my Wii U. Yes, the polygons and everything are all, all nice and dandy. But you know, who's actually making money? And if I have to download Nights from the virtual console, you know, that's how they would make money. The other thing Nintendo should have pursued is they set up a new company that whose sole purpose is to port everything over that they can get their hands on. That includes if Sony and Microsoft are willing to actually give up the rights to something. Um, for instance, Tengen, who is owned jointly by Atari and Namco. Uh, that's the Atari who's now WB Games. They published uh, Afterburner, Alien Syndrome, and Shinobi on the NES. What I am saying, well, today if those were on virtual console, oh, the good versions are actually, but if those were on virtual console today, uh, you know, Sega would have those rights for those versions. And I say they sell those versions. Go, go right on ahead. You know, and yeah, also flood the 3DS eShop in the same way. Just, just flood it. Have every Game Boy game, Game Gear game, Atari, Lynx, um, Neo Geo Pocket Wonder Swan have them all available, all regions. So that way we can all download and enjoy these games. But 
this isn't the forward thinking Nintendo has because maybe I, there's something I don't understand looking from outside looking in. I think Microsoft has a healthy understanding, understanding, understanding of somewhat where they screwed up with the consumers with the Xbox One. Now I don't have to buy it with Kinect. Um, I don't know any games I've used Kinect uh, on the uh, Xbox One off the top of my head. They're going to go ahead and make many, many games compatible with the Xbox One. The eventual idea is to move me to the Xbox One as easily as possible. So that might mean having the ability to still play my Xbox 360 discs while at the same time maybe it's as simple as I take my hard drives full of games or my USB drives full of games from the 360 and just go ahead and plug it in to an Xbox One. That's a thought. Now, there is one boo here because I don't have any confirmation. But the point is that if Xbox One, which is supposed to be based on x86 architecture, I don't know how true to x86 to x64 is. I'm not programming on this machine or the PS4 or the PS Vita. So I don't know anything about the stats here. Um, however, if it is that close to x86, why can't they just play the original Xbox game? I'm serious. And they themselves should do the same thing. Every single arcade game or whatever. And I think it should be verbatim. I don't like the way Simpsons... I agree with RetroStore. I do not like the way the Simpsons arcade game... I'm happy that it's available. I'm happy I can play. But I don't like the way it's been presented. Same with the um, X-Men arcade game. I think it should just be uh, more or less raw out there. Um... Like, I don't know why they can't get this right. I, I have to say that Backbone did a... Let's take the Pit Fighter emulation on Midway Arcade Origin. Um, Pit Fighter's a poor game, so... I'm just going because I know how to play this game. Um, at least, I, put, I don't remember ever configuring the controls, but if I hold down the RT button, and I hit the... Um, I'm going to work on an Xbox controller here, and I hit the uh, X and the A button together, it does uh, the tie character's spin kick, which is the, the best move to use throughout the whole game. And that's an improvement. What's not an improvement is using the start button to bring up the main menu. Are you telling me that the RB or the LB couldn't be used for that? Because this is how it should be mapped. Um... That sounds like an option for select. Select is insert coin. Why should the coin be inserted? Have, have the emulator programmed in a way. Now, I don't actually have to insert the coin. I can just press A to start. I don't want to do that. I want to press start to start. This whole press A to start kind of started off um, on the Genesis and Super NES. And uh, it's just gone. To me, it, it sucks. So I want to press start. Just press start to start. That's the way it should be mapped. And then, um, I agree that the uh, LT and RT and the face buttons here, X, Y, A, D, should also be allowed to be used in the game. Now, now, um, for the options menu, it should be either LB or RB. And then one can be insert coin for novelty. The select button should bring up the menu. Can I remap it that way? I don't know. I'm just picking that as an example. But that's what should be done, in my opinion, with most games. So I can bring up this menu. The game should start raw. Don't even have the frames on the site. It should start raw with a uh, resolution corrected. Um, if it's um, a 9x16 game, the resolution is corrected. If it's a um, 4x3 game, resolution is corrected. And everything should be exactly the way the game appears in the arcade, none of the smoothing or crispness or anything, just pixel for pixel translation. Um, and I would like to have seen that the Xbox Live Arcade actually being an arcade. Something else I wish they would have stuck to. Um, again, they could add a blanket emulator as part of the OS, but something I wish they had stuck to is the 50 megabyte limit. 
which was broken by Symphony of the Night, because Symphony of the Night could not be compressed any further. I think it would have been simple for Konami just to divide it up into two and uh, sell it two parts at five dollars each. People will be like, oh, that's a rip-off for them. Well, I understand everyone's stingy, but they're all stingy for the wrong reason. There's ways to be stingy and ways not to be stingy. And then a blanket emulator, completely for the Xbox, original Xbox title on 360 and Xbox One, or in Xbox One's case, just a dynamic translation engine, that um, also allows full functionality of the OS. There should be no reason why I'm taken out of the OS and given a just a bare bones interface. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, what about cutting support to these older systems? Both Nintendo and Microsoft have done this, and I think Sony's starting to do it now with PSP. Uh, boo. There, there should be some kind of skeleton support for all time. That's just my opinion. I'm not really going to get into that too much. Definitely the stores should have support. So I do applaud them in that area, where if I can still buy it somehow, you, you know, that's great. Um, what about selling movies and stuff? Well, let's go back to the Wii U and the 3DS. New 3DS is in the 3DS argument. I believe that Nintendo, not only should they have sold 3D versions of films at the at the 3DS resolution, but, you know, they should have sold it. No, um, it should have been flashed. The 3DS should have been built with the ability... It was released in 2011. There's no excuse for not having um, SDXC support. So it should have had SDXC support all the way up to, you know, 2 terabytes. That way a person can go and buy movies. Um, the other thing is Nintendo should have vigorously went after the apps. Now, I have said in the past maybe they should have had all the same apps like an, an iPod or an Android phone. Well, yeah, they should have allowed that, but at the same time, the apps, the benchmark for the apps they should have had are the ones that are pretty much found on the Xbox 360. I think there's 124 apps or 130 apps or something. Maybe, maybe it was more now. Maybe 150 apps. Whatever. You know the apps. There's Netflix, or CBN, there's Disney movies anywhere, and so forth and so on. And those apps, that's what should have been. No, I'm not joking either. That's what should have been. It should have been on the 3DS. So yes, Voodoo, whatever. And then some other apps that they should have pursued. Um, not Microsoft, but Tenma. They should have talked to Apple and Google and had, you know their apps. I mean, there's no Amazon on the 3DS either, but there is Amazon on the Wii U. But there's no voodoo in there. You see where I'm getting it. I'm a crunchy roll in the 3DS. So those should have been on the 3DS. As well as bigger memory card support. Selling TV shows and movies. You know, I, they should have made a deal so Apple would have got paid for it. You know what I'm I know Apple wants to sell devices, but this still would have been money in their pocket. And I keep saying Apple. Well, that's because I use Apple and I've had the best experience with them. Um, like I haven't had the best experiences with Google. I've had shows get refunded five years down the road. So, um, the other thing with the 3DS is, you know, what is the ability of the 3DS to emulate? Where does it stop? I think it stops at Sega Genesis, so, you know, not really... I mean, I understand that it has the computational power to probably run, um, well, we know it can run up to, uh, Xbox 360 quality games and texture and presentation. So it's probably, the 3DS is probably right under an Xbox 360. It's a dual core 32-bit. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind it could probably handle a lot of the stuff that's on PSP. The 3DS, not the DS, the 3DS. So, I would say that, like I'm proposing how all these games should be available up front, I probably am thinking here that the um, emulation-wise, uh, using blanket emulation, 
that there are 3DS that can handle majority of arcade games. Well, well see, MAME is not a blinking emulator, so with MAME, these are specific to the machine they're emulating, but um, could handle everything, you know, so a person, you know, like the whole collection, man, Fairchild Channel F, <coughs> Magnavox Odyssey, uh, Atari 2600, XEGS, whatever, ColecoVision, yes, there are NES games, yes, there's Game Boy games, so all that available, uniting foam or whatever, like I said, just let 10,000 things go on the, the 3DS home menu. I mean, you know, it, it's a it's a ridiculous number. Allow it to have up to two terabytes of SDXC storage. Also, optimize the camera because a lot of times when I'm using the camera, it stops. And also, you know, have things like Skype or whatever. As long as a person has a Wi-Fi connection, they can use it. It has all these apps from Microsoft and Google. You know, it has um, a web browser that should be able to be upgraded. In fact, allowing other companies like having Google Chrome, having Firefox, having new versions of Opera, also available for for upgraded web browsers. Have a default web browser? Sure. Have this. Have a Twitter app, Facebook app. You name it. So I, I do see things completely different. And um, the way I look at it, just yes, the 3DS has, has a few advantages. Uh, combining both screens, now you have a uh, 9x16 screen. It has already a 16x9 screen up above, and it can also be used in 4x3 mode. I believe having the 3D movies and all the TV shows and everything, that would have been a good idea. And uh, having more video apps, more uh, interactive apps, so forth and so on, all that would also be a good idea. This never came to be. And um, I really don't know where Nintendo's going. I do believe that the Wii U, like the N64, it's profitable. It didn't sell great. The, you know, there, there are lots of good games, but there's more uh, games. <laughs> Quickly, I want to read off my disc list. Now, I have many more games downloaded, but here's the uh, disc list. I have uh, Nintendo Land, FIFA Soccer 13. Uh, Batman Arkham City? Arkham City. New Super Mario Bros. U. Assassin's Creed 3. Tekken Tag Tournament. Mass Effect 3. 007 Legends. Epic Mickey 2. Ninja Gaiden 3. Um, this is not the um, NES version. Just so you know, it's Razor's Edge. Zombie U. Sonic All Star Racing Transform. This one says Arkham Origins. Okay. It's another Batman game. Scribble Knots. Oh, I can't see that. I'm right in front of you. I think it says Unleashed. Unmasked? It says Unmasked. Angry Birds Star Wars Edition. Disney Infinity. Madden 13. Disney Infinity 2.0. Oh, let's see. Do you want to talk about not finding any games? Deuce X. Human Revolution. Need for Speed Most Wanted. The Lego Movie Video Game. Assassin's Creed 4. Four Skylanders Supercharger. I've been meaning to buy Skylanders for a while now. I have it. Splinter Cell Blacklist. Now those are just what I have on disc. And I have um, a couple hundred games downloaded, and uh, that's the way I go. Like I have Watch Dogs downloaded, um, I have Wind Waker HD downloaded, and Mario 3D World downloaded, and Mario Kart 8 downloaded, Smash Brothers downloaded. So forth and so on. I guess I could pull all that up, but I'm not going to. I have many virtual console games. Um, that's another thing. Nintendo could take, you know, virtual console volume one, 100 games on a disc. So, but I definitely think that, yeah, the GameCube compatibility, stuff like that. Um, about GameCube controllers, uh, get over yourselves, guys. Come on. Um, I already addressed virtual reality stuff like that in the last show, so I'm not doing it in this show. And this was just a general topic. I didn't read any news or anything. You know, quasi-political, quasi-financial. Um, like I said, you either like it or you don't like it. You know, you can stand with me or you can bash me. Um, if you bash me, I will simply uh, delete your comment or block you. I mean, it's pretty simple. So speaking of that, if you want to send me a nasty letter or you want to send me a letter of praise, uh, first off, go to patreon.com slash coffee for binky. Give me some money here because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm burning on nothing. 
And then also, uh, coffeeforbinky at gmail.com. I'll go ahead and put a subtitle up. Hope you enjoyed today's show. I'd like to keep my uh, voice moving and everything. I believe what Alan Spencer said. I mean, him don't agree with things politically, but I do agree with his work ethic. If you pay for a commentary or something like that on a DVD or a Blu-ray, you should have someone constantly talking. Like my fingers are snapping. And again, I apologize. I have to use the iPad, but um, I just don't have the ability to use the microphone. Like that. And you have a pleasant day, all right? And I'll, well, I won't see you, but you will hear me again in the next episode.